Уважаемые дамы и господа, добрый день. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome uh, to Gaida Forum. Uh, this is the session that deals with the future of Russian railways and uh, rail transport in Russia. Uh, this is an online uh, session. Uh, we have uh, the uh, CEO and the president of Russian railways, uh, Mr. Belazurov. Uh, we have the uh, chairman of the board of Transmash Holding, Mr. Komisarov, and uh, we also have uh, Maxim Rishetnikov, the Minister of Economic Development of Russian Federation, online with us. I thank you all for joining this session. Let me start by saying that uh, 2020 was definitely a difficult year from many standpoints. It has given us uh, a fine example of the flexibility of logistic systems. These uh, logistic systems have been able to respond uh, very rapidly uh, to the changes in the uh, value chains and supply chains. This year has demonstrated our ability to find uh, new ways of supplies, to find, to quickly find uh, new uh, routes of delivery and uh, transportation. Uh, we have also seen some new challenges. Uh, we have faced new questions about the prospects of our economic development, about the prospects of transportation systems. A rail uh, system is uh, historically very important for Russia. It's one of the systems that uh, acts as a basis, as a foundation for the national economy. And the development of railways determines the development of national economy. Last year was also uh, known for setting new development goals. New goals were set uh, for the ratio of economic development, a GDP growth ratio above a world average. And uh, this is a very ambitious goal that cannot be attained without high level of coordination in development of transportation systems and railways in particular. Uh, railways will develop in line with the trends that we see in various industries. And this brings about the first question that I would like uh, to post. What is the role of uh, rail transport and uh, what is the role of Russian railways uh, today and in the future uh, against the backdrop of all the technology trends. Uh, first, I would like uh, to give the floor to Mr. Rishetnikov. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, the importance of Russian railways in the country cannot be overestimated. I will just say that uh, we have seen a 1.5 increase of the volume of cargo on Russian railways. Uh, this is the main logistics line uh, that supports our domestic uh, manufacturing and exports. Uh, this is the company that employs directly 800,000 people. It uh, provides 53% uh, of uh, passenger operations internationally. This is a systemically important uh, company. But uh, there is more to it. Uh, it's important to have proper attitude uh, to transport infrastructure. Last year, we talked a lot about the investment program and uh, new uh, proposals about tariffs. We have made several important decisions. I uh, have made a decision for myself uh, what my attitude to RZD should be, whether this is uh, an individual center of growth and uh, driver of growth. Should RZD focus on maximizing its revenues and profits, 
or should we look at RZD as a uh, a basic uh, service uh, in the economy that uh, supports other industries so that they can make profit. Uh, I think we all came to the same conclusion. The main uh, mission of Russian railways is to provide uh, economic uh, growth, to be the basis of economic growth. And again, this is a corporation uh, that has its uh, capital, that uh, uses uh, borrowed capital. It has has to be financially sustainable. It has to have sources of development, sources for investment. If we were to give RZD the task of maximizing uh, revenues, profits, uh, the government is the main shareholder. It would not uh, be uh, right. The system of railways uh, would be distorted. This would be uh, like introducing an extra uh, tax on our economy. We have discussed all those things, and uh, we have developed sets of criteria uh, for the operation of Russian railways. We have to understand the real value that the company brings uh, to our economy. Uh, we have uh, endorsed an investment program for Russian railways, and uh, it should, by 2025, which is a short period of time, increase the uh, throughput capacity of Russian railways. It should also support 4% growth of Russia's exports, which is a significant uh, source for the future economic growth. That is the quick answer to your question about the role and significance of the company. Uh, Mr. Belozerov, what is your vision uh, of the uh, present and of the future of Russian railways? The Minister of Economic Development uh, is in a better position and he can uh, see further. We think we are even more important. Uh, I could give you a few numbers in 2020, which was a very unusual, very challenging year. Uh, but we still had numbers that have proven to us that railway uh, is very important uh, for our country. Our predecessors, the uh, country leaders, have always paid attention uh, to the railways. And all of this allowed us to show good performance in 2020. It was not a bad result uh, that we have seen by the year end. Uh, we have seen some reduction. We are not making a product. We are moving uh, the products made by everybody else. Uh, therefore, we are kind of a reflection of the general level of the economy. We have uh, seen a reduction of 2.7%. Uh, we have entertained different scenarios last year regarding uh, the reduction of volumes. Uh, some of them were really dramatic, up to 15 uh, percent. Then we made a strategic decision that uh, we would assume 3.5 percent decline, uh, but the reality turned out to be better than that. The uh, share of rail transport in uh, all operations last year increased by 1.3%. Uh, this means that uh, today, if you look at all transportation systems, including pipeline transport, uh, we have grown by more than 1%, which is very significant. Uh, over 17 years since 2003, uh, when Russian railways were incorporated as a company. This uh, percentage, uh, the share of our mode of transport has grown by 7%. Uh, we have a positive balance in the share. If we do not count uh, pipelines as a mode of transport, then you would get the most impressive number. Uh, the volume of uh, our share is 87%. That is the the illustration of the significance of our company. Last year, some of the indicators uh, were record high. We are very proud of the fact that we have moved uh, over 800 
130,000 containers. This is a unique number. We have never had such a big volume. We have not even forecasted that. We expected to have a, a high growth number. In the beginning of the year, we did not anticipate this, and then later on, uh, we uh, did see this. We had a lot of meetings, and I appreciate what my colleagues did. Uh, Dmitry is one of the persons that uh, participated in that, and uh, in the end, we uh, saw that achievement. Uh, $718 billion is the investment program in 2020. We enjoyed support from the government, from the president, for our investment plans. This allowed us to continue all our lines of business that are so important for the economy. We continued to buy traction units, uh, rolling stock. We were fixing rails, uh, sleepers, everything, uh, the entire range of our work. We also did a lot in the way of uh, digital transformation. Uh, we did the research in uh, quantum computing. We had an, an amazing uh, volume of investment. We have increased the reliability of transport to uh, 99 uh, percent this year. We want to achieve the level of 100 percent. That means that we have to be fully uh, answerable uh, to our uh, customers. Uh, we have not been idling. We have been working very hard all of last year. We have been improving the quality of our service. Last year, we had over 100,000 uh, people in uh, Russian railways uh, that worked uh, from home. Uh, they have worked remotely. Just think about it. Uh, they are railway people, and uh, they worked remotely. We have not lost any of our employees. Uh, we continue to maintain our relations with our customers. All the uh, IT systems worked well. In fact, we increased our customer base. We have uh, found out that uh, against the backdrop of limitations, uh, rail systems have some advantages. Another conclusion uh, which was quite interesting uh, in Europe, and we are a part of Europe, the decision was made uh, that uh, 2021 would be the year of railways. So this is uh, the year of uh, European railways. This is a, a serious uh, trend. Uh, all countries decided uh, to accelerate the development of railway systems. Railways reflect all modern trends. Uh, that is true for the uh, carbon footprint. We follow the sustainable development goals. We are making serious contribution to the development of the economy, and we do a lot of smaller things. We help to develop urban agglomerations. Uh, all of this is uh, possible through the services of railways. We have always played a big role, and uh, Russian railways continue to play a big role, and they are the transport of the future. We are experiencing renaissance. Very impressive, very impressive numbers. Uh, I was especially impressed by the number of uh, uh, teleworkers. Uh, Dmitry, what would you say as a consumer of uh, rail services? What is the future of railways? Uh, Mr. Belazurov has uh, spoken at length about the contribution that uh, Russian railways make to the economy in the way of uh, providing services. I can say that for very many Russian manufacturers, railways is the only mode of transport. They have no alternative in the eastern part of the country. Uh, the service of Russian railways is uh, irreplaceable, and this uh, is a resource that everybody values. There 
are other factors that are important too. Russian railways are a huge customer uh, for the economy. I will explain it. Uh, Russian railways help to develop uh, science, help to develop new technologies, new products. Uh, pretty much uh, everybody who works uh, with railways, manufacturers of rolling stock, uh, operators, uh, those people that uh, make uh, cars, wagons, uh, those uh, uh, who uh, make um, over uh, head structures are focused on increased uh, efficiency. Railways follow the uh, logic of buying the stuff that improves efficiency. Uh, there are uh, very stringent policies uh, that uh, create incentives for better efficiency. We are making a great contribution to the economy. And uh, we are very consistent, OZD and the government, uh, followed uh, the strategy for development. It was not an easy year, but uh, we have enjoyed the support of the government and of the president, and we were able to keep uh, the number of our employees at the previous level. Uh, it would be very bad if we had uh, to uh, break up any of our investment programs, uh, because we would then uh, be wasting a lot of efforts and time that has already been invested. Uh, what about the future? Well, uh, first of all, all together we understand that we are working for the future. There is no alternative uh, to railways when we need to move uh, heavy freight. There is no alternative to passenger operations. Uh, this is the uh, most environmentally friendly, the most uh, safe mode of transport. There is no doubt about that. Look at Moscow. Look at other cities, uh, there are new rail uh, systems getting launched and uh, they become very popular at once. Uh, there is no alternative uh, to rail. Uh, one uh, can offer attractive solutions for short hauls, but when we're talking about uh, heavy weight uh, freight operations, there is really no alternative uh, to rail. Uh, we uh, see that in the West they have a uh, better networks, but uh, now we have great uh, prospects uh, associated with the development of the eastern part of the country. There are a lot of different solutions uh, that we can name. Uh, there are infrastructure projects, there are very many things that would allow us uh, to uh, speed up our development. We certainly have uh, to increase our capacities, we have to improve our efficiency, uh, we all have to work hard on that, and that is true for freight operations and passenger operations. Uh, digital transformation uh, helps uh, to improve our efficiency, and uh, by a great extent, uh, we uh, have a very interesting uh, joint uh, project, we are uh, launching an automatic accounting uh, system for various operations uh, for uh, maintenance of track. This is very big, very complex and comprehensive uh, project, and it increases uh, our efficiency, it increases our performance, the level of transparency. If I may, I would like to intervene and add something. What is a smart smart contract. Uh, when we get together a contractor uh, and a customer, uh, we look at uh, the areas where we disagree, where uh, we have uh, disputes. We see what we can do, uh, whether uh, there are ways uh, to fix those problems, to solve uh, the uh, disputes. We see that we can do that uh, by by uh, applying software, we have to create uh, appropriate algorithms uh, to address those problems and uh, things work very smoothly. Thank you very much. I think we have a fairly good idea about the current role of Russian railways and it seems that this role is only going to be getting uh, 
bigger uh, with as in general trends uh, about the environment and sustainable development, uh, we see that uh, these effects are adding up and they are going to affect uh, our entire economy. In this uh, context, I would like to raise the second question for you. It uh, has to do with the current uh, system of tariffs that has been introduced in 2003. So uh, it is coming of age this year. Uh, what uh, you as experts think about the role of this tariff system, is it uh, up to the uh, challenges of today? Uh, Mr. Reshetnikov, well, uh, this is a very big question, and I don't really have the time to give you a comprehensive answer. Uh, we have had a very long discussion, and uh, uh, it is very tempting uh, to give you the uh, full story. Uh, we have talked about many different alternatives, and one of the uh, most important uh, solutions that we had to make uh, was uh, whether we uh, should provide uh, subsidies to different categories of uh, freight, uh, like uh, iron ore and coal, uh, and uh, the losses that we make there have to be subsidized. This is not something that we invented. This uh, has always worked this way since uh, the uh, conception of Russian railways. Uh, we uh, use uh, different units for measuring uh, performance, uh, but the the general pricing uh, policy has been around for over 100 years. And this brings about a question what we should do in the future. Since 2003, the structure of tariffs has experienced many changes, and the structure of transportation has changed a lot too. We have seen a much higher uh, share, up to 68% of uh, the cargoes uh, that generate losses. We have a system of cross subsidies. Uh, we uh, paid about 250 uh, billion, uh, which is quite a big uh, number. And this is a long term challenge because this is something that uh, plays a destabilizing effect, and we have to respond to this challenge. Currently, all the tariff solutions that have been adopted, that adopted in 2018, they will last until 2024 or 2025, so we have this fixed arrangement. The government is not planning to go beyond the indicators that were approved earlier, so we are committed to this uh, arrangement long term, despite a drastic change this year to keep up with the investment program that was planned initially with the uh, sources of funding envisaged earlier. We have approved other decisions on tax breaks, on dividends, and on extra support in terms of investment from budget and quasi-budget resources. So the investment program has been completed, but uh, so we used non-tariff ways to implement the investment program, but we'll continue to stick to the basic principle, tariffs should not grow higher than inflation. But what will happen to the railroads beyond 2025? And tariffs define the appeal of investment projects, particularly in Siberia, Russia's Far East, the exploration of new oil and gas fields or metals, whatever, um, upgrade of uh, facilities and plants. So tariffs are really important uh, for the rate of return, etc. So we need to look at it this year. We need to 
draft a model of the tariff policy. And the key priorities are as follows. We need to use the cost plus method. We should not go to a model of return on equity. Any other approach would lead or ROI, we should, otherwise it would lead to the taxation and taxes would have to be paid to the budget of the Russian Federation. So this uh, cost plus model should provide for the proper maintenance and reconstruction of rail infrastructure. And we know that overhauls of rail infrastructure, the purchase of the rolling stock locomotives uh, is a costly affair. I really hope that we'll have some time to talk about investment during this session. But what's important to know is that investment needs to be made in the right areas. We need to set mutual responsibility for those who receive these investments and those who are the beneficiaries of those of that infrastructure. We have had incidents when we built something, so we did our part of the job, but our but our colleagues didn't do it. Also, we have some, we have some uh, tracks, uh, we have some ra railroads, some routes where we have uh, excessive capacity and we have routes where we have shortage in capacity. If we have a, an ex excess, excessive capacity, we can set tariffs that are no longer than uh, the uh, intermittent costs, so that means we can sacrifice some of the permanent costs. As for the routes where there is a shortage of capacity, we need to maximize added value for the economy. The higher the goods are, the higher they're ready to pay, the higher the tariff should be. And it needs to be given priority. For the years ahead, we should still keep some cross-subsidies. I believe we cannot cancel these we cannot abandon this practice because our production means were initially placed elsewhere, so any distortions, any fluctuations here may cause, may cause friction. We don't need that. We need to keep that. And as for the routes with shortage of capacity, Class 1, low budget economy goods need to an extent to cover some of the intermittent costs. But we understand that the distribution of permanent and uh, intermittent costs could be up for debate because Russian Railways has to spend a lot on these uh, intermittent costs on this temporary costs. So it's up for a professional conversation. But in any case, we need not to forget about it, not to lose sight of it. And the ultimate tariff model should definitely provide for financial sustainability. Currently, the company has a debt, and that debt could grow 3.9 to EBITDA, 3.9 times to EBITDA. By global standards, it's not that much, but any further increase in debt is not is not good and the company can still service existing debt but that debt was for investment projects with a certain payback period but going forward we need to ensure sustainability through the tariff system 
So it's, it's going to be a challenging year, but we did align a lot of parameters to make sure that we move forward. Well, I hope I didn't take up all the time. It's a diff really different question, but I believe we have a very good and conversation with uh, Mr. Belazorov and with rail operators. Thank you so much, Mr. Reshetnikov. Yes, we still have some time left. We, we actually responded to the question that I asked, uh, want, that I wanted to ask a little bit later on any upgrades to the tariff uh, policy. Mr. Belazorov, can you answer the two questions? What's the current state of the tariff policy? Is it in line with the existing realities? And what's the way forward? Thank you. I think we are on the same page and what needs to be done. Here are some of the key points. The tariff policy does not reflect the reality. It doesn't satisfy either of the stakeholders. Some say too high, some say too low, cross subsidies. It means that everyone is on dissatisfied. Why? Mr. Oshetnikov mentioned earlier, and I'd like to emphasize once again that the tariff arrangement has been shaped during the Soviet times, back in the USSR, with one assumption. Railroads has always been a ministry. A ministry is part of the exec executive branch. Cross subsidies could be within the government bodies. And so these cross subsidies, it's something cheap. Well, I mean, you could have cheap goods, you can have expensive goods, and there was room for space for maneuver, so to speak, uh, breathing space within that. Uh, some leeway within the ministry. But when we were corporatized, when we became a joint stock company, the entire system has changed. A joint stock company, its goal is to drive its revenue. But we have our owner, it's the Russian Federation, and we definitely need to accomplish all the goals that are set by the owner, the government. So until 2012, the new policy framework provided for the baseline revenue, so we have the right balance, readjustments could be made, but those tariffs were issued or given for one year, and that was the biggest pain. Every year could change, something could change. I absolutely agree it could change your entire econo economics. So when we finally decided to switch to a long-term po policy, tariff policy, it was really changed and we adopted the uh, that inflation cap. We need to cut costs despite the whatever happens elsewhere. Yes, we agreed that. We continued to stick to it. We've tried to refine our arrangements. There were some elements which needed to be recalibrated. But again, that took place as part of dialogue. It was a tough dialogue, but we had to come to some kind of compromise. But uh, again, that's not uh, the kind of a uh, mean average uh, um, approach. You can get something, you can charge higher from these goods and charge lower for these goods. No, our ultimate goal should be based on our, the fact that we need to drive a revenue. And right now we would like to focus on the distance of, of the route. And we also need to talk about the digitalization. We know what costs where. We know the breakdown of uh, the costs of revenue. So we want to offer you the transportation from point A to point B for a specific figure. How will it look like? Well, it's up for discussion. So we transport uh, wagons 
classes of goods, but actually we transport wagons. It could be cheaper, it could be higher, but we need to get money not for the goods, but for our work, not for any type of goods. Transportation should be relevant of what goods they're in. It's up to the government to regulate this, yes, but we need to get money for our work, for our, our level of operations. Mr. Reshetnikov was right. We need to take the decision this year. The investment cycle is a long one. Investors need to know what is going to happen next, and that should be a tariff for a long term. We fully agree on that. There could be some restrictions. You know, can use some formulas or whatever, but it, you should have, we agree that it should start from 2026. Some of the elements, and we are in talks right now, could be done earlier. We've done a huge step forward in the transportation of oil and petroleum products. So we've refined system. We have some segments where we could make some adjustments too. We fully understand that these recalibrations will be fully in line with what we're going to have in the future and will not worsen or uh, the conditions for our freight operators, because without freight operators, railroad will not be needed without passengers and freight operators, without freight, railroad doesn't make sense as an object. So we definitely need, like to see those new plants to be built and their investment cycles need to be completed. So all of these uh, transition elements need to be taken into account. So we fully agree on that with our colleagues. As for transition, definitely fixed and versus variable costs. And I said we are a transportation company. We need to earn money for transportation. There are three classes. Here's an example for you. Any refinements that were done on every year for specific assets, and this was the proper approach. We currently have a figure of 100 groups. Three, we used to have three classes, and now we have 100 groups. See what it means? Yeah? That's a lot of work outstanding. Predictability for freight operators, I'm sure you would support me, is extremely important. What are your expectations? Those who are part of this debate and trying to find to some consensus, we all say similar things, but definitely each of us have their own perspective. So here's what we heard, fundamentally speaking, sustainable operations of railroads. Everyone agrees on one thing. We need to pay fully for the operations of the railroads, and it's the reg up to the regulator, you know, the regulator needs to ensure that, regardless of whether it's a freight or passengers, R Russian railways should have enough revenue to cover all of its costs including multiplication of its uh, capacity. It needs to have sufficient amount of revenue. Second, due to different differentiation, local optimal points, you know, are very key. You have east and west. And they're also different, different, have different types of traction. Even on private companies, of low freight, local freight operators, again, it's uh, going back to the conversation about local optimal modes, as they are known. Third, this strategy has to be long-term. 
cannot have policy that is changed every six months. No, yes, we can readjust it. First, we, we did actually, we twice had to readjust uh, the policy higher than the policy, uh, the higher than inflation rate. Uh, because we needed to restore the normal economics of Russian railways. And then we decided to keep it lower than inflation. That's good, because that was very predictable. Russian Railways has a lot of innovations, but there are other industries where, which also have uh, a direct uh, correlation with uh, the railways. And second, another point, who is the ultimate beneficiary? It's the state and the consolidated economy, and it's the job of the regulator to figure out what kind of task they could set, who to stimulate. Tariffs is a tool to fine-tune the system. If we exclude macroeconomic or consolidated effects from this equation, then we have a very, a very shortened version of this system. So we end up in a very abridged version of the system. If there are routes with excess capacity, and if you only pay for the variable cost, then who would pay for the fixed costs? Either the entire system and there's distribution, or someone has to subsidy, subsidize that. This year, the government put forward a new initiative. The agreement on, the, on stimulating and protection of investments. You need to make your investments. We would make sure that the regulations are right. And your investment infrastructure would be discounted against your future taxes. So it's like tax credits. It doesn't require any new funding from the budget. And investors would not need to pay taxes going forward if they invest in infrastructure. So any revenue that our economy gets from railroads needs to be reinvested to a certain extent in railways. There are investment programs that have a payback period, but there are projects that don't have a payback period but have a global macroeconomic importance. Shall they be implemented? If we as a country, if we as a nation benefit from it, then we just, yes, we need to go ahead with it. We just need to redistribute the costs. So you just need to strike a balance. It's very difficult, and every participant is aware. We see very, we say very similar things, but there are a lot of nuances here, intricate points here. Everyone is interested in a fair, sustainable, long-term model. And again, sustainable operations of Russian railways is our priority. If we undermine that, if we challenge that, then the economics of Russian railways will be doomed, will go down the drain. I would like to emphasize how thankful I am for you for the support of the government and the president. Whatever we are discussing right now, we know for sure that the government at its own level will do the right choice and the entire system will work like clockwork and it's extremely important in the long term. Our heated debate is just further evidence that we really want to move forward. We have a lot of desire, we're passionate about it. We know there are issues and we know how to address them. As for nuances, well, we'll hammer it out at the level of the government. 
And we do have, um, we are convinced that we will be heard, our voice will be heard. Yes, sometimes uh, solutions uh, are not to someone's liking, but uh, we really thank the government for their efforts to find some compromise. <laughs> well, that was a good note, yes? Our conversation is coming to an end. I'm sure there are a lot of other issues on our agenda, but we will need more time. <laughs> But as you said, all of the panelists today have a similar vision, definitely skewed to their own side, but nevertheless, I believe that this mutual understanding will promote further efforts in this area, further dialogue. Our distinguished panelists, I would like to thank you for this substantive uh, discussion. I would like to thank our audience for spending their time. Thank you. Thank you so much.